What? This is great. This is even on. This isn't even on YouTube. I don't think this thing. Oh no. Oh no no. Yeah. So this is gonna be. No, there's not. That's the guys are in the comments are fucking screaming. You know, bro, where's the I'm gonna find, find somebody <laughs> needs to get it and post it. And Matt Cox and his girlfriend Rebecca Hawk are on the run. Cox has swindled more than four million dollars from picture. banks in Tampa in a mortgage fraud scam, and he's hungry for more. Hungry. So we went straight to Atlanta. There's the mortgage fraud capital of the world. Atlanta is, really? is one of the hardest hit cities by that. mortgage fraud. I don't know that probably for maybe it's, it's about true. to get worse. I fell for some ho so hard and so fast. He just made you think that it was no big deal. That you know what he was doing was fine, and then he would say. If it ever comes to it, just blame me. You don't. You won't. You won't get in trouble. I'll take the blame for everything. Cox and Hawk go looking for a oh, house to rent, that. with a plan to take over the homeowner's identity. I remember this. He story. used to tell me that yeah. people believed women more than they believed men. Hawk, using the name Grace Hudson, poses as a single woman looking I mean, to rent this house in really? Alpharetta. Yeah. So how did you go about making that? The, the the older ID, really the new ID. Is that all with like... That's fucking laminate, bro. That's just laminate. You got an laminate. exacto knife and a, a printer or printer? a copy machine? No, yeah, my laptop. I Did just, you have Photoshop back then? They had... Fo we had we, we, we've had this conversation. They had Photoshop. I, I They've had Photoshop, but I just used Word, and I just lined up... Everything was identical. I lined up all the fonts, all the spacings, everything exactly the way it would be when you print it okay. out on license. On so, Word. On Word. Then I just print it out on a piece of laminate in reverse. Okay. So that then when you have the actual driver, the actual piece of plastic, I would just take two 20 grit sandpaper and lightly sand off the actual inform the text, like your real name. Oh. So I have the holograms. I have the Florida ID where it says Florida, 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 that whole thing. I have your picture. I have everything. The state of, uh, the, uh, the state of, uh, the, uh, the Sunshine State and all that, everything in green is lodged into the, that's, the actual plastic. Right, that's what you left on there. You didn't sand that off. No. And everything I, in black, you sanded it off. Just the, just, yeah, just the information. Right. Like, I, well, I would leave the other stuff, like your issue date, expiration, height, all that shit. Signature? No, signature I would have to, you'd have to sign. You like, hers that. is Grace Hudson. Okay. Right. So I would then print the laminate, overlay it, glue it on with an actual glue stick. Now you got the piece of plastic with the, thing flip it over take an exacto knife and exacto knife it around take some 220, 220 grit sandpaper buff off the sides hit it a couple of times beat it up a little bit like any license you've got in your pocket for six months it's beat up a little bit and then now you can go in and say boom boom million bucks here's here's my name and they look at it and they make a copy and they you know even if they ran the na the number would work like you could go through check systems open bank account i've had dozens and dozens or does i've had a shitload of fucking banks opened using a fake driver's license. Guy's name's wrong. It, to completely fabricated. How many of these did you create in your entire career, you think? Maybe like that? Yeah. 20 or 30? 20 or 30. I mean, because then I eventually figured out how to just get the DMV to issue me the goddamn license. Right. I'm just going to get you to just, just make it. Because then I can go, I can get pulled over by the cops and hand him the real license. He can, can run it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I, why would I keep making them? Way one? easier. Yeah. Poses as a single woman looking to rent this house in Alpharetta a suburb of Atlanta. She meets with the owner, Michael Shanahan. He and I talked for a while and he was, you know, he was very nice and, it, and that was a hard, because he was the only person that I really met face to face. Grace Hudson, Rebecca's alias, rents hard. the home. And Matt Cox takes over the landlord's identity. What I did was I, I used a, a child's social security number and I went and got some credit cards in his name, went and opened some bank. By the way, which child was it? It was a child of no, was a family I, renting it before you, or what? Child? No, no. You said I, you used a child's social security number. Yeah, I may. I went to social security, right? And I got them to issue a social security number to a child that was ten months old. Oh, got it. So it was okay. a. It's a child. It's a fake child. It's not a real child, right? And I would, then I would mirror it. So I'd pull get credit cards in the name of that with that soch in the name Michael Shanahan. I've got your driver's license. Mm -hmm. The driver's license that uh, the the date of birth and everything matches er, the everything matches right and I've got these these uh, credit cards and everything issued to you I open up a bank account in your name I open up everything in your name now I'm, it's completely synthetic identity it, mm -hmm. because the only thing that's the same is the name mm -hmm. 
everything else was different on him. Date of birth, address, because I wasn't using that address. I used another address. Because when we borrowed money on that house, we didn't borrow it as a owner-occupied property. We borrowed it as a rental property because then they'll issue you the check right away. And hard money guys don't typically lend money on owner-occupied properties. They prefer to lend money on investment properties. Why is that? I have no idea. It has something to do with the lending and the ability to foreclose on it. You foreclose on investment if property. If they're living in it, it's harder to foreclose on them. Yeah. Way more difficult. Okay. Accounts, uh, hoping that none of this would hit Michael Shanahan's credit. Now, posing as Michael Shanahan, the owner of this $200,000 house, Cox goes looking for money. Well, I met uh, the fellow calling himself Michael Shanahan in the, at the front door here. Remember this guy? John yeah. Holman is not a faceless bank. He lends his own hard-earned money to people who need short-term loans. I was there primarily to, to see the condition of the house. At the time, it didn't occur to me to wonder about his identity or anything to that effect. Cox, posing as Michael Shanahan, tells Holman he wants to borrow money against the equity in his home. The man seems trustworthy. And the home is good collateral. The story was that he owned a house free and clear and wanted to borrow money against it to start a business. He had just moved back from the UK, wanted to start a business, and needed $110,000 or so. I bought it, hook, line, and sinker. Within a couple of weeks, the deal is done. Holman has no idea Cox is also talking to a friend of his. I'm what they call a hard money lender. I lend money mostly to other investors this that are guy? buying properties to renovate and resell. Cox. Sucker. And the <laughs> he wants $106,000 to but start there's a, a bank. business. There's a, they don't interview the St. bank. St. Martin, Shanahan seems like a sure thing. It was a 50% loan-to-value loan up in Alpharetta, Georgia, in a beautiful neighborhood. Very low risk. LTV. Both lenders do their homework. Holman runs a title check on the house and a background check on Shanahan. At the closing, we got his ID. And he had actually more than the normal ID. He had a Florida driver's license. He had a um, credit card and a social security card, all in the name uh, Michael Shanahan. So everything checked out, and we made the loan, thinking that we had secure interest in the property. A month later, Peter St. Martin realizes Michael Shanahan has missed his first loan payment. Uh oh. It was gone by then. I pulled out like a was, month later? Like 400000 Yeah. Within a month? Yeah. Yeah, we can't. That's the one where I actually, where in the bank, they go, uh, when I was pulling, I was trying to cash one of the checks, it was Scott Cugno, and they fucking. They're running a check and everything. Remember the guy was twenty nine thousand dollar check. I was trying oh, to cash. Oh yeah, and you called him from. And they and well, they called me on my phone. They they're like, hey, we're trying to verify this. Check. I verify my own check. Um, that was which there is in the book. Right. Okay. So um, yeah, and so <laughs> I end up getting out a, like four around like four hundred thousand dollars. Becky and I get out around four hundred thousand in week within weeks, and we just take off. Like I didn't know, I didn't know these two guys know each other the fucking chances are that i mean how am i supposed to know so anyway yeah this is when the secret service gets involved oh shit <coughs> but neither man is worried each thinks he's the first in line to foreclose if necessary and i'm happy about it and i'm looking forward to taking back this collateral and selling it very quickly at a very nice profit although we don't do these loans with the purpose for getting the house back it's not necessarily a disaster for us but Matt Cox will have the last laugh. That's why I remember pretty similar to that, but I remember. A short time later, the two friends are at a concert together and they begin to compare notes. You kind of say, well, where is your property? And, you know, because you do most. So John and I were chatting and mentioned that, yeah, we did this loan. You're not going to, you know, this guy, first month default, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what rang a familiar bell there, but I asked Peter, what street was the loan on? My, mine was Keenham, and you're like, Oh, no. I said, uh-oh. It's the same property. Same address. And I said, what was the guy's name? And he said, Michael Shanahan. And you said, I said, uh-oh. Unbelievable. Well, and the fact that he borrowed money from you and me, we both yeah. know each other. Small and world. I sat there during the rest of that concert thinking that I was probably out $110,000 and not real happy about it. 
John Holman calls the U.S. attorney. Didn't you say the insurance companies pay them back? Yeah. Here he says, <clears throat> the one guy, he says he already got paid back. He's the, one of the guys, the one guy the gray with the gray guy. hair, he shows up at my sentencing. Really? Pretty sure he's the guy, he's the one that showed up. He shows up at my sentencing and my U.S. attorney is like, you know, Mr. Holmes or whatever his name is. Um, he, uh, he, Mr. Cox stole a hundred and ten thousand dollars from from him and he they he, that was his own money and he you know this is all he does by the way this guy's like a multi-millionaire plus he's got a credit line so i mean it's not like he works at 7-eleven um anyway he he you know stole his money and he couldn't afford to lose that much money and you never got any of that money back did you and he goes this is in front of the judge at my sentencing he goes um uh actually i, I did get the money back and she goes what what he's yeah I, I did get the money back she goes when, when did you get the money back? I mean, this is the fucking courtroom. There's fucking reporters. Stop judging me. So anyway, there's reporters and the fucking judge, and they're having this conversation. It's like a fucking hundred people in the fucking thing. And, he, and he's like, well, I did get the money back. And she's like, well, when? And he's like, it was, it was uh, shortly after, you know, a month or two later, I, I, I got it back. And she goes, well, well, what about the payments he missed? He goes, no, no, I, I got the payments back too. Ooh. What do well? You must be out something. She's like, no, I'm, I got, I got everything back. She goes, what about, well, what about an attorney's fees? Anything? He goes, oh no, no. He goes, I did, I did have to pay some attorney's fees. He goes, that was about fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, I did pay some attorney's fees. And she goes, fifteen hundred dollars. She goes, well, that's a lot of money. She goes, you couldn't afford to lose that, could you? And he goes, um, no, no, I couldn't. I couldn't lose. That was, it was a lot of money to me. And it's like, it's like, bro, I mean. Oh my doing, bro? God! <laughs> I mean, not that it's not fucked up what I did, yeah. not that it's not that, but you know, it's it, she was they just they're desperate to fucking make you look as bad as they possibly can. Yeah, and he got paid back. Yeah, you know, from the title one insurance. One of the guys. One of the guys. Well, no, the other guy gets paid back too. Okay, he just doesn't get paid back during this episode. Mm. He's been paid back. Okay, he's not on my. I don't owe him money. He's not a part of my fucking um my restitution because he was paid back. And who paid him back? The title insurance. I said his insurance. The title, the title insurance, insurance yeah. company mm. is on my restitution. I owe them the money. Oh, okay. That so it's sense. like if you say, oh, you stole half a million dollars or $2 million from Bank of America or five hundred thousand or 50000 from Bank of America. It's like, yeah, but Bank of America got paid back. So why are you saying Bank of America? Because who I really owe is lawyer's title. They paid them back. But see, that's too complicated. So it's easier to say, "You stole this money from me. You, I never got paid. You owe Bank of America. You owe John so and so." Well, mm -hmm. actually, I don't owe him anything. Right. So, but go ahead. Sorry. Attorney's office in Atlanta, and the case is routed to the U.S. Secret Service. The Secret Service isn't just in the West Wing of the White House. More and more, they're taking on white collar crime. We, we protect the president and former presidents, but we also deal with any kind of financial crime, anything that affects the um, financial infrastructure of the United States. Special Agent Andrea Peacock doesn't know who Michael Shanahan and Grace Hudson really are. It was John and Jane Doe. And when we obtained our initial warrants John and Jane um, for Doe? the two, they no were in the name of John and Jane Doe. The Secret Service creates a wanted poster and eventually tracks down a former associate of Cox's in Tampa. He did, in fact, know who he was and Scott told Tugman. us his name was Matthew Bevan Cox. He's real guy. Agent Peacock learns that Matt Cox has taken out three loans on Shanahan's property for a total take of more than $300,000. Peter St. Martin is out of luck. His title insurance will not cover the loss. You know, $106,000 loss overnight to a small business that could have easily put me out of business at that time it hurts it hurts badly that i don't have access to that money